Hello and welcome to Lesson 5 in Anchor Group's free course on advanced PDF HTML templates. In this lesson, we're going to cover building a template in source code mode. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did in Lesson 4 with WYSIWYG mode, now here in Lesson 5 with the source code mode. So to start, we'll go over here and we'll toggle this little switch here over to source code mode. Just gives me a, a little alert, making sure that I'm aware that things may change when going back and forth between the source code mode and the WYSIWYG mode. And now that we're in source code mode, you can see we've got the code laid out here in front of us. So we're going to start out by looking at the preview. So we'll go up this right hand corner and click preview. And as you can see, we've got our company logo kind of taking up a lot of the page here. So we're going to tackle that first. So we'll go back to our source code. We're going to find the line that has our logo in it. And you can use control F to search for the word logo. So let's do that now. Control F, we'll type logo. And here this looks promising on line 19. Let's start by changing the style here. So as you can see, it says style, float left margin, seven pixels. I'm just gonna get rid of that margin and I'm gonna add in width. And let's add 160 pixels for that. And let's add in some height. And for that, let's add 95 pixels. Okay, now let's see what it looks like now that we've made those styling changes. There, that looks much better. All right, now that we've got that, let's double check our invoice to make sure it's showing up correctly there. So if you remember what we do there is we go back to our template. We're gonna hit save and edit here. And then we're gonna go to our invoice. I have it open up in another tab. So we'll go to that tab. We'll use this print dropdown, click print. And there you go, looking good. I'm gonna go back to our last preview that we took. And if you remember from our last lesson, if you tuned into that one, we had this address and company name section up here. That's just a little bit off, a little high, and not aligned the way we'd like. So let's tackle that. First is we're gonna clean up this code. We're going to control all C. And then we're going to open up prettydiff.com. The once here, we're going to select the beautify button here. And we're just going to paste in our code here. You might have to hit execute down here. You may not have to. But this code here on the right is our code. Just format it a little bit better for us, a little bit more readable. So we'll control all and control C to get that code. Go back to our template and then control all and control V to paste it in. And there we have a lot cleaner looking formatting for our template. Now from here, we're going to work with this macro list area. It starts here on line 17 and ends here on line 50. One other trick that you can use to make it a little bit easier on yourself is you can go on the numbers of a line if they have a little arrow pointing down you can click on them and it will remove a section of the code from your view. So if you just want to like declutter a bit, make things a little bit less busy, I'd recommend doing that. I'll just go ahead down here and let's get rid of everything below the macro list. Okay, in this first table, I want to add some styling. We're going to add some height. And let's make the height, let's make the height 100%. Next, let's go to this table data tag and add some styling here. And let's add vertical alignment. And let's make that be top. And let's do text align. Let's make that be left. Now let's also add some width. 
let's make that 230 pixels. And I'm going to drop down this image tag here. Next, we're going to move this span tag to a new line. So I'll just copy that. I'll make a new table data tag. And this is where we're going to keep that code that we just copied. If you remember from our last lesson, we wanted to split the company name and address from the table data that the logo was in. So we can work with them more autonomously from each other. Inside this table data opening tag, we're going to add a row span. And that's going to be a three. I'm going to add some styling. Let's do some width. Let's make the width 206 pixels. And then we're going to add some breaks in here to drop this information down on the template. For that, we'll do br space then forward slash, and we're going to do two of those of two breaks. And then this is where we're going to add in our hyperlink to the company name. For us, we're going to use our anchor group company website. So for that, we're going to add an a tag here and href. And then we'll add the target. We're going to leave that blank. And we'll put a close. For this next part, we're going to take this span tag right here and we're going to add it in. So we'll do Control X, Control V. All right, so that section looks good. Moving on to the next section. Here we have another table data. And we're going to add some styling to this opening TD tag. I'm going to give it a width of 366 pixels. That looks good there. Moving on to the next section. We're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm just going to copy and paste this here. That section looks good. Moving on to the next section. And we're going to do the same exact thing here as well. So we'll just paste in there. Now we've made those edits. Let's go ahead and preview how things are looking. So it's giving us an error alert here. Let's click on the details. Syntax error in template. OK. And I know exactly why this is whining at us. And this is probably the biggest con of using the pretty diff text formatter. It will sometimes get rid of spaces in if tags. So that's one thing we'll want to do is to make sure that these spaces that were eliminated get added back in. As you can see up here, this if.local, there needs to be a space in between the if and the dot. And then we also have our else if statements. Now let's use control F and try to find the rest of the if eggs. Another thing we want to check is our lists. So right here we have this opening list tag. We want the list to be separated from this expression here. And then we want to break up this expression after item. It should be space as space item. So we're good to go. So I'll go back up to the top and hit preview. As you can see, we now have the company name with the hyperlink attached to it. If we right click and hit open link in new tab, it brings us to our company's website. But this is still off a little bit. As you can see, it's still a little bit too far to the right. We kind of wanted to line up with this ship to text here, just above it. You can also see over here, we want all these numbers to be on the same line. So we got to think to ourselves here, okay, What's going on here that's making both that this is unaligned and this is pushing 
text to a second line. Well, a good candidate would probably be that this logo's table data is too big and it's pushing everything else to the right. So let's go back to our template. Let's find that table data that has the company logo in it. So you can see right here, there's the company logo. And here's our table data. And inside this tag, we're going to go to width. And for width, I'm going to put 190. So we'll hit preview. And there we go, that looks so much better. That text is now aligned, and the numbers underneath the invoice text are not going to that second line. Our next step, we have a few different pieces of data throughout this template that have text alignments that are not all the same. And we want to fix that so they're all the same. So we'll go back to our template. And we're going to scroll down to where we start finding those text alignments. So for that, we're going to be working in the body of the template signified by this body tag up here. And so we're just going to go up here and we're going to close the head tag just to make things a little bit less busy. So the first thing we're going to do is add an alignment to this first table tag here. We're going to make that be left. Next, in this table data tag, we're going to add some styling. And we're going to do a text dash align and make that left as well. We're actually going to reuse the same bit of text a number of times. I want to copy that. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of these real quick. And that's it. So now that we've got that done, we'll go back up here, click preview, and there we go. Now things are all aligned left. And we can just double check with our last preview. There's the difference. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate how to add fields to the source code. So we'll go back to our template. Now let's do just like we did with the last lesson. And let's add the subsidiary field just above the company name. So I'll go back up here into the header. Let's open that up. We'll find the company name. And it's going to be a very similar syntax here. So we're just going to copy and paste this in above it. And the company information, you can replace that with record. And then instead of company name, we'll use subsidiary. If you remember from last time, the way we found that field is we went to the invoice, we found the field subsidiary, and then we left clicked it and hit copy field ID. And to check to see what that is, we went up here in the search box and pasted it in, and it was coincidentally subsidiary. Now the field IDs and the labels are not always the same name, so just be aware of that. So we'll go back to our template, we'll hit preview, and as you can see the subsidiary value from that field in the invoice populated here, it's not on its own line, which we can change real quick, but it's there. So we'll go back to our template, and we'll just throw a break tag at the end of this line that has the subsidiary value on it. Let's just hit save and edit and then let's view it in the invoice. So now let's go over to the tab that has our invoice in it. We'll hit print 
And there you can see that subsidiary value from the invoice parent company is populating there. You can double check. Yep, parent company right there. And that wraps up this lesson. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.